we came in with over you know 370 meters of close to 170 silver gram equivalent um, on a couple of holes which are in the Santa Barbara uh, area and that's where we're doing the MRE so it's giving us that much more we wanted to extend the MRE date because obviously it's going to be a more robust uh, first pass mineral resource study Hello and welcome to viewers tuning into Assay TV. We are catching up with Aloro Resources, who are exploring and developing the Iska Iska Silver Tin property in southern Bolivia. And I'm with Tom Larson, CEO of Aloro. Tom, really good to be speaking with you again. Adam, good to see you again. Yeah, so uh, last time we caught up a while back, uh, we were talking about Iska Iska and a great deal of development that you've done there around the project. Could you give us an update of where you're at at the moment, some of the latest drill results. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for having us on again. Um, we have been very, very, uh, obviously very, very active. Uh, we now have four drills on site, one underground, three surface drills with uh, uh, Leduc, a Bolivian drilling outfit that uh, have displayed fantastic production, daily production for us. Uh, we're now at probably close to 55, 56,000 meters of drilling to date from our inaugural uh, drilling campaign start off date back in September of 2020. So that's been, you know, I, with the COVID obviously interrupting things, it kept, we kept moving along. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just to reiterate, you know, news flow did slow down a few months ago with obviously the issues that we had with the finishing labs, primarily in Lima, uh, we did pick up another laboratory in um, Galway, uh, ALS Laboratory Finishing Lab in Galway. Um, so that's been very helpful. In, and we should be up to date. I'd give it another uh, four to six weeks. We should be right up to date on our assay results on the different holes of that 55,000 meters to date. That encompasses uh, roughly 88 holes. So it's ongoing. The, the fourth drill showed up about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and uh, we should see some news flow here very, very shortly on some uh, more holes that we're, that we're um, sort of have been zeroing in on. And I think the market's quite, you know, is, is looking for news because it has been, again, a little bit slow, like once a month type of idea, sometimes mm -hmm. once every six weeks. So we are trying to improve that. Uh, for that news flow for our, our shareholder base. Um, right now, we, we about two months ago, we decided to move forward on what they call a shelf prospectus um, to basically, uh, you know, the, the rationale behind that was to when we finance in future, we can move very, very quickly uh, when you're, because we have an existing uh, prospectus that's been vetted by the Ontario Securities Commission. So it allows us at will to do a financing, whether it's a bought deal or an overnight type marketed financing. Uh, but, the, the, you know, it takes four or five days to close, not three, you know, four or five weeks mm -hmm. going through a new prospectus every time. Um, so that, that was the, the decision that we made two months ago. Because of all the drilling to date, all the work to date on the property, uh, the Ontario Securities Commission wanted us to update everything, uh, an updated 43101 report, not a mineral report, MRE, but an updated 43101 report. That took two months to complete. We were signed off last Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, finally receded. Uh, and that gives us uh, clearance for the next two years to do financings up to $100 million Canadian. Uh, not that we're doing a financing for $100 million today, but we have that, that, uh, that amount that we can draw down from over the next two years without having to write up a brand new prospectus. So it saves a lot of time for legals on legals, saves, saves a lot of time for us from the standpoint of, of uh, you know, being able to continue with news flow after five, you know, a week's closing. So that, that was quite, uh, you know, the only the only issue was that, unfortunately, it did take quite a long time to get that 
cl uh, clarity and back in, you know, to get the uh, prospectus, shelf prospectus uh, receded by the OSC. And you saw the market in the last month obviously has rolled over a little bit from the standpoint of the resource space. Uh, and we, as long as everyone, you know, along with other, you know, solid names in the resource space, uh, you know, did, did roll over as well, somewhat. Um, we completed a, just on the financing side of things, we completed a bot deal that closes tomorrow, actually. Uh, it was a $5 million bot deal uh, that Cormark out of, uh, it's a bank here, a brokerage firm here in Toronto, uh, led. And it was done rather quickly, right the day after the, uh, or two days after the shelf uh, prospectus was receded so that we could mm -hmm. move forward on that. Our timing, Unfortunately, I wish we had done this a few few weeks prior, but look, at, it, it is what it is. We have some great uh, legacy shareholders on the, on the roster and there are um, uh, about six or seven participated quickly on this financing at a lower price uh, than we were anticipating. However, it's completed uh, and we upsized it to $9.5 million. That closes tomorrow, 8.5 plus a 15% green shoe. So it closes tomorrow, 9.7 million. That will leave us with, we, we now have $8 million in the bank. Uh, so that will leave us with 17, roughly 17 million Canadian. We have a burn rate right now with four drills uh, of around 1.2 million uh, US. So we're, you know, we don't have to go back to the market. We're not gonna attract those that might think we might be going back to the market uh, that might put, put pressure on, on our, on our our stock price short term, uh, and we can get back to business uh, from the standpoint of what, what our focus is, 100% ISCA, ISCA, and why we're all investors in this really, really exciting uh, project that Aloro is involved in. Uh, so that's sort of the background on the financial side where we're sitting. Um, and uh, so we, you know, we have that sort of, uh, again, that flexibility to move forward without going back to the market. The dilution was rather light. That's one of the attractions of our company. I've been always very, very uh, conscientious about the share float, the share capitalization in, in relation to a lot of our peers uh, from the standpoint of the amount of production we've done to date, uh, the drilling uh, to date, uh, and the basic uh, results from that drilling. Every hole is mineralized. Not every hole will be commercial, but a lot of holes are commercial in the model that you'll see in our uh, mineral resource estimate that will come out. We've been pushing it out, you know, uh, it was supposed to be first quarter, now it was second quarter, now we're pushing it out to the beginning of third quarter. But there's a positive reason for that. Um, where the MRE is located in the overall ISCA ISCA volcanic edifice. It's in the upper zone, upper areas of that system, of that preserved uh, magma system. And we, what we're coming up with are some of the holes that you saw last month that took our stock from the, the value of today's price, 350 up to 540 over you know, a one week period. Uh, and this is how volatile because of the tightness of the stock. Um, you know, we came in with over, you know, 370 meters of close to 170 silver gram equivalent um, on a couple of holes, which are in the Santa Barbara uh, area. And that's where we're doing the MRE. So it's giving us that much more. We wanted to extend the MRE date because obviously it's going to be a more robust uh, first pass mineral resource study with uh, deepening the Santa Barbara area. Um, so dimensionally, it should, I don't wanna say exactly what, what numbers, but um, we think it'll be substantial. So, you know, the share, the share count of the company from, from the standpoint that bringing out a, a first pass mineral resource with uh, going from roughly 63 million shares, uh, 63, 63 and a half, to issuing, issuance of another 2.5, Five, 2.8 million with the green shoe. Uh, really, it's taken us up to just over, you know, close to 67 million shares outstanding, um, which had we done a financing to the tune of 10 million at, let's say, 450, you know, we've, we've taken a, 
a hit of maybe eight, 900,000 shares when you look at it from that standpoint. So it's not the worst case scenario. So, I mean, we just have to get on with it. The market is very tough right now, uh, but I do have a, I think a lot of us out there that know more about the, you know, the macro than I, uh, but I mean, my sort of feeling from what I'm hearing from the experts is that inflation obviously is rampant. Interest mm -hmm. rates have been increasing, but I do believe if you take a look at the Japanese market, you see the the 30% decline uh, in currency yen to uh, dollar because you know they've kept a ceiling on their interest rates over time, moving them up because of their debt and trying to service the debt. I think that could sort of be the same type of effect that we might see in the US where they do curb rates somewhat, um, which the only give would be the US dollar dropping. And hopefully that'll be a model for uh, commodities to continue in the next 12 months to strengthen again, hopefully moving up some of companies such as ourselves. So that's our sort of plan. So we're very bullish in the future, especially when, you when you're dealing with metals that we're coming up with such as silver and really uh, tin. Um, so I, you know, I think we've been very fortunate uh, that we are coming in as we get deeper into the system with tin uh, percentages increasing um, more than commercial. We're doing a lot of metallurgical work as we speak, especially on the tin. The, the other outlying metals higher up in the Santa Barbara area, the, the, sil the silver, lead, zinc, are the, you know, the recoveries are gonna be spot on from what we anticipated initially. There's, um, there's almost no deleterious elements whatsoever. There was talk about arsenic, that was only in the old um, epithermal gold areas, which is very, very small, that came from a totally different source than the uh, volcanic uh, movement back in the, uh, you know, 15 million years ago. That, that epithermal uh, arsenopyrite gold hosted material showed up 250 million years ago from rocks of the Ordovician period. So that was really overplayed and uh, I think the shorts had fun with that, but uh, we know the metallurgical report will be out with the MRE. Uh, you know, we're fine tuning the tin component. It's in Cassiterite. We have a, uh, a top uh, consultant in the tin business. People that have the International Tin Association know this name very well. His name is Mike, Michael Hollowell from Cornwall. Yes. Um, he's, coming, he's coming over to PDAC. He supervises the tin metallurgical procedures on our material uh, from, from England to the Blue Coast uh, Metallurgical Laboratory on Vancouver Island, which I visited last week. So uh, we expect to have a very, uh, you know, we're very pleased with the development of that metallurgical uh, process. Tom, could I just uh, ask you, um, sorry, when is the proposed date for the MRE at all? We're going to push it out to sort of the third quarter, and it should be at the beginning of the third quarter. Dr. Pearson, who's uh, along with Dr. Osvaldo Arce, the two, uh, our two technical uh, gurus, I'll call them, they really, um, uh, they want to put in between 10 and 15,000 meters of drilling, which we're doing now, um, into the Santa Barbara area mm -hmm. uh, to complete the deeper areas for the completion of the first pass which we believe still to be 1400 strike length by uh, 500 uh, width by probably now 700 uh, depth. Uh, and then you, you know, utilize a, uh, an SG, a specific gravity of 2.6, 2.8 based on our density. And that gives you sort of a number of what the, the, the actual volumetric will look like and then we discount at 30, 40% rule of thumb. So we'll see you know, how, how close we are to that number, but it's, it's substantial. Uh, so we're probably thinking you know, beginning of third quarter. So you're talking summertime. Yep, excellent. Um, the, yeah, so I mean, everything's moving forward where uh, again, uh, there's a couple of uh, interesting things more on the, on the the trading side of the company where I'm planning on taking this company in the next couple of months. 
right. uh, from the standpoint, but we'll you'll see that soon. Okay, so um, focusing back in on the resource, and it seems like you want to get these extra fifteen holes drilled. Uh, what mineralogical studies? What do you expect? Sorry. Um, so the, the fifteen thousand meters of drilling. Um, basically, you know, we're using two, two drills of the four. We call that the Santa Barbara area, the domain one area, which will be the first pass MRE. It's just, that's, it's localized to that area. We then have domain two, and that's the further down to the valley floor, like the, the relief from surface to floor of the collapsed caldera within the volcano is around a thousand meters. So we have uh, drills set up, uh, two drills set up that are drilling into those new exploration targets. Nothing to do with the 15,000 meters that we're doing now to complete the first pass MRE higher up in the system at Santa Barbara, that wretched pipe and the mineralized envelope around it. So. That is where I think the market's getting quite interested because we're coming in with some interesting holes. We did uh, uh, some, some geophysics and mag inversion models. We came up with a very interesting target just below the, the valley floor in our slide. It looks like a big red sort of object. Um, that's basically, you know, we have touched parts of that in the upper levels before we even came up with that mag target. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's coming in is uh, we're hitting a lot of puritite, which in our case is associated with tin. And that's why we're, we're, we're pretty uh, confident that some of the drill holes that we started a, a month or so ago into the top part of this target below the valley floor uh, could yield some interesting uh, results, even you know, more so tin. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to get a lot of that news coming from that area. Uh, so you've got a two-pronged approach. You're, you're, you're dealing with the, the practical MRE and you're do, dealing with the blue sky, uh, like down by Porco, uh, the, that breccia pipe complex, and then down below into the uh, valley floor, underneath the valley floor into the tin porphyry potential, along with Mina 1, Mina 2, which are two adits down by the valley floor with their own um, particular uh, uh, breccia complex. So lots of targets. I mean, it, it, this is, as doc, people like Dr. Quentin Hennig and, and, and types that have been following us, and yep. Dr. Quentin Hennig's been very, very helpful uh, as an advisor. He's a very smart man. Um, he, you know, the bottom line is it's almost to the point, like, why even do a, 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 you know, a resource? This thing's so wide open and big, just continue on. I mean, you take a look at peers like Philo, um, you know, same thing. I mean, their resource report didn't come out for, you know, for quite some time or, you know, great bear. But in our case, we do have a really good model for the first pass MRE, which will be an open pit type model. So we are going forward with that, but that'll only be on part of the overall uh, system. Excellent. Very good. If we could just zoom out um, on Bolivia itself and the environment at the moment, there's obviously been some resource nationalism around the lithium sector but obviously um, tin and silver continue to uh, to flourish really yeah i mean the solars the bolivian solars have always been under the national domain uh, they haven't opened it up uh, yet to uh you know major joint venture participants like what you see you know in other like the solars in argentina chile um however the I, my feeling is from, we've been there since 2019 mm -hmm. and just watching, you know, how things are quietly developing. Uh, we've been, you know, it's a very passive time from the standpoint of, you know, when we first participated, you know, in the country, obviously our Dr. Oswaldo Arce has been more than helpful and is highly regarded in Bolivia being a Bolivian and, you know, his background as head of the Bolivian Geological Society and his father running, having been national manager of the, you know, country run uh, arm, mining arm called Comabal. Mm -hmm. um, Luis Arce, the former finance minister under Evo Morales for the Mass Party, um, who, you know, had to step down um, because he wanted to continue with, you know, another four years, which 
uh, wasn't allowed primarily. Um, you know, Luis uh, has always been, yeah, he's a national socialist. I think it's funny when you say so socialist, it's, I look at it more, they're more national, they're more protective of their resources. Um, I don't think they're, I don't see ma major communistic nationalistic programs going on. I see a lot of hardworking and, uh, you know, very, very proud people, uh, you know, in Bolivia. So it's a question of, when you see national uh, expropriation or anything like that, there's reasons, just like in many countries. And, you know, you've heard of a couple, I won't get into details, but really it gets down to not getting along with the local community or the cooperativas in the area. And from there, that's where the politicians start, you know, the, the politics can step up, especially if you're not, you know, adhering uh, to the ways and being sensitive from a social life license aspect to the necessary um, concerns that the Bolivian people in certain areas might have. Remember, in Bolivia, for us, we're you know we're a polymetallic, silver, tin, lead, zinc, a little copper, gold type of deposit, multi-metal. These are all in southern Bolivia. It's a totally different world than, for instance, eastern Bolivia, which is down more you know more down. Uh, closer to sea level, more sort of uh, uh, cocoa growth, different farming, uh, a lot of farming, that sort of thing. We're in a bit of a different world. We're high up in the Alta Plano, although flat line, 4,000 meters. The only thing we deal with is sort of quinoa uh, farming and also, uh, you know, llama migration. These are the two things that you do have to be careful of and be, be very conscientious with. So uh, with the people that are involved in those activities. In our case, because we're isolated, this thing had never been drilled. Um, you know, it was a preserved system, didn't get on, didn't blow up through the, you know, the, the top of it. The, so there was no mineralization on surface. It was preserved within. There hasn't been any cooperativas or artisanals on our site, on our nine and a half square kilometer volcanic edifice. There's no communities. They're the closest small communities about 10 kilometers, five, 10 kilometers away. Uh, and, you know, the Viegas family who own the property that we're earning it, that we, you know, have the option to, by spending 10 mil, paying 10 million US, we'll get a 99% interest. They are very, you know, for Bolivian standards, very wealthy. And they have a very good, uh, you know, relationship. So. That's the ground of where we're, you know, sort of the the, uh, the support area of where we're sitting at. And so when you're dealing with La Paz or you're dealing with the mines ministry, um, you know, obviously it's a slow process. Uh, you want to make them aware what, where we're going. Remember, this started off as an exploration bet. I haven't seen any expropriation at all uh, in Bolivia since we've been there. I think that's been so overplayed. You've got two, two operating mines, uh, Pan American Silver, San Vicente, 50 kilometers away from us. And you've got San Cristobal, the Sumitomo's operation that have been great participants for, you know, uh, with contributing a lot of tax, uh, tax receipt revenue, at least to the Bolivian government. Uh, and they've been in operation for, you know, 10, 15 years. So, if you do the right things and you're very transparent, um, I feel that, uh, you know, we, you, you can only benefit Bolivia with these massive uh, like this, this and New Pacific are doing really well as well. Uh, you know, they're coming, they came out with some really good results this morning, showing size potential on one of their projects. And that's the type of thing we want to come in with a major, major giant type deposit that can show eventually a model that, uh, you know, could show 50, 60,000 ton a day type operation, bulk tonnage, because that's, and if you can show a 50 year mine life, I mean, that is so good for the country, obviously for our shareholders, how it, it'll all work out at the end, who knows, it's gonna take time. So I think we're, our size is that big that I think any thoughts of Bolivia trying to take our property, I think in this day and age would look pretty, pretty, uh, um, I, I, I don't think it would be, I think it's a very, the risk is very, very low. So um, that's all I can really say about, uh, 
you know, we're, we're very pleased to be working there. Yeah, indeed. Very good to get the overview and the situational update. Thank you, Tom, for also updating on the state of the project so far at Iska Iska. And we look forward to tuning back in really to hear a bit more about the MRE uh, around sort of Q3 time. So thanks for speaking with us, ATV. Thank you, Adam. Have a good day.